Chapter 4, The Campsite. After bouncing around for a few minutes, the young troll found himself stuffed into a large canvas bag and put back put on the back of a cart. He poked his head out, but a girl with a bright red hood pushed his head down and gestured for him to be quiet. A second later, he heard her yell, Trolls! Trolls! The troll boy could hear the clanking sound of armed guards running up towards the cart. They went that way, he said a boy, or said a boy's voice. There was a small hole in the canvas bag, and the troll could just make out a human boy holding a bad tempered hen, pointing to what looked like a small group of trolls running out of Tailtown. He had to admit, from this distance, the gorillas looked very convincing. We'll catch them, called a guard. Don't you worry. Then they they were gone. What's happening? whispered the young troll. The girl smiled as she folded open the top of the canvas bag and passed him a bottle of water and a bag of snacks. We're going camping, she replied. Shh, said another boy's voice. My dad's coming. It took a long time to get to the campsite, but by the time the cart squeaked to a halt, everyone was relieved. Anansi's dad, Mo Mosi, ruffled his son's hair. This is where we're meeting your mom and uncle, he said. They should be here any minute. Great, said Anansi as he climbed out of the cart with Jack and Red. What? squawked Betsy as she fluttered to the ground. We're all a little stiff, Betsy, said Jack. What? said Betsy, looking upset. I know that you have that old volleyball injury, said Jack with a sigh. You never stop complaining about it, he added under his breath. Come on. We'd better get the tent set up. Good idea, said Anansi's dad. Give me a second and I'll throw down the tent bags. He climbed over the seats into the back of the cart and reached to pick up the bag the troll boy was hidden in. No, yelled Anansi, Red, and Jack at the same time. Why not, asked Anansi's dad with a frown. What's going on? Err, said Anansi, looking at Red. Err, said Red, looking at Jack. Err, said Jack, looking at Betsy. Betsy shrugged and squawked. What? Anansi's dad's mouth gaped open. Are you seriously telling me that you just smuggled the escaped troll child out of Tailtown in a camping bag? Anansi, Red, Jack, and Betsy nodded. Do you have any idea what would happen if you'd been caught? There was a silence for a moment before Mosi added, Well, I can't say I blame you. Keeping a child locked up in those stocks, it just wasn't right. Anansi, Jack, Red, and Betsy let out a sigh of relief as the tent bag wriggled out and out popped the troll child's head. So, I guess I can come out now? He asked with a shy smile. After he'd gotten over the shock, Anansi's dad had taken the news pretty well and went off to feed the horse and put back the tents with Betsy. So your name is Quartzel? Red asked the troll. The boy, troll boy nodded. But you can call me Quartz if you'd like. Cool, said Red. Well, I'm Red. This is Jack and this is Anansi. Both boys smiled and said hello. Look, it's not that I'm not grateful, said Quartz slowly, but why did you help me? I know how much humans hate trolls. Not all of us, started Red. But she was distracted as two trolls burst into the clearing. Quartz froze in shock as Anansi leaped up and shouted, Rufaro, Mom, there you are. Mom, the troll boy said, troll boy said his mouth hanging open. Your mom is a troll? Anansi laughed. Only in the daylight, then he ran over to give his mom a huge hug. Court still looked confused, so Red explained. Anansi's mom and uncle have been cursed by the troll warlock, Hurlan. The spell used to make them look like trolls all the time, but now it's only in the daylight. I guess that's why we're more used to being around trolls than some other people. Okay, said Court slowly. So what happened, asked Jack. How did Mayor Fitch's soldiers get you? It must have been horrible. Chained up in those stacks with no food or water. And what about going to the bathroom? <clears throat> I think what Jack is trying to say, said Red, elbowing Jack in the stomach and giving him a fierce look, is, are you all right? I am now, said Quartz, thanks to you and your friends. Oh, it was nothing, said Red, smiling. Well, it was kind of something, 
said Jack. I mean, I spent hours making those troll feet. I was being polite, hissed Red under her breath. Oh, right, added Jack, smiling awkwardly. It was nothing. So anyway, what were you going to what were you doing near Tailtown? It's pretty much the worst place to be a troll. Mayor Fitch hates trolls. I know, replied Quartz. All the trolls know. It was just last week that an army of his men came and set fire to my village. What? gasped Jack. Quartz nodded. My village was just on the edge of troll lands, pretty close to a few human villages. Everything always used to be fine. Then, last week, some soldiers turned up and said Mayor Fitch had decided our village was actually built on human land. I don't know why. Our village has been there for hundreds of years. What happened next, Anansi? What do you think, said Quartz miserably. We're farmers, not fighters, and they had swords. They made us leave, and then a few hours later, all that was left of my village was ashes. I'm so sorry, said Anansi's dad as he walked over. That's just terrible. We lost everything, said Quartz sadly. What? squawked Betsy angrily. Jack started to translate. She said that Mayor Fitch is a stupid, sausage-faced... I know, interrupted Quartz. I have no idea how I can understand her, but I do. Anyway, there's more. One of the guards stole an amulet we've had in our family for years, and I wasn't going to let them get away with that. So I sneaked out to follow them. I was trying to get it back when they caught me. And you know the rest. Now, I have no idea where my family is or what I'm going to do. Red put her arm around Court's shoulders. Don't worry, she said. We'll get you back to your family. She looked around at her friends. Right? Anansi's uncle Rufaro nodded firmly. Absolutely. Fitch has gone way too far this time. Let's all get a good night's sleep. We leave at first light.